He's Ooh, taking a pause. Fantastic. He sacrificed his queen. Wait, what was that? He's on peace. But uh, he's oh, taking a pawn. Fantastic. He sacrificed his queen. It's Unbelievable pawn. sacrifice. Anand taking a pawn. Oh, Turn around. Anand is just up a piece. Okay. He's on peace. But uh, he's taking a pawn. Oh, Fantastic. He sacrificed his queen. It's Unbelievable pawn. sacrifice. Anand showing his form. <laughs> so, at the start of this, Smirin had three pawns for the piece. Now he's only got one. An interesting scenario. The. the coin has been tossed and Smirin has the white pieces and amazingly enough Danny this is by the way this is another thing that I would say as well uh, that I point out when you look this was a this was an event many years ago but you see right up here you see of course Intic INTC stock ticker they were one of the sponsors of this event so you see Intel Intel up here and um and so it's uh it is worth noting that you see like there there used to be a lot of major corporations that were sponsoring um chess events so let's keep going is the repetition of what happened in Moscow. The players were even after the first two games, and now again, Smirin has the white pieces as he did then, Anand the black pieces, but if Anand draws the game, he wins the match. That's right, but Smirin has... By the way, you guys, this is an Armageddon game. This is an Armageddon game from, I think, 1993 or something. I don't know when it was, um, but long time ago. The time advantage is a one-minute time advantage to compensate for that. So, it's all down to this game. Smirin opens with his favorite e4 move. And Anand... Oh, we've got... The, we, and again, of course, you have the XQC opening. Uh, of course, XQC plays the same Petrov opening uh, with Black, so everyone's trying to follow in his shoes. Even 20 years ago, they tried to follow in his, in his, uh, in his, in his steps. Playing symmetrically for the moment. Smirin lashing out with his pawn. So this is a typical opening that Anand uses. He's, he's used it in many big time competitions. He's won a lot of games with it. And now just playing quickly, all he needs to do is draw and he'll move on to the next round. Kasparov awaits the winner. So that's a slight surprise. Anand thinking about this move, slightly unusual. Now, what's he gonna play? I've never seen Anand so uncertain. It's incredible. He's spending a lot of time on his clock, and you have to remember that he's spotting Smear in a minute, and for him to be thinking this deeply, and it's only like the fourth the fourth move on the board. It's incredible. Smear in playing very cleverly here. Now, what's he going to do? Not thinking. I think this is unbelievable. He's almost spent Yeah, a so I, I think some, some people are wondering what he's trying to remember here. I think in this position, and is thinking basically between D6 and D5 here, he's trying to remember... Is d6 a move or not? Because if d6, knight f3, d5, it transposed into mainline theory. Um, but I think he wasn't sure on d6 if white could play knight f7. And then he was calculating all kinds of lines like queen e7 and other stuff going on. So he, the reason I think he went into the deep think here was probably debating whether to play d6 or d5. A minute, 20% of his time for four moves. It's incredible, the uncertainty of this strong player. He clearly is a bit off form. He better get back in form or he's going to be out of this competition. He's under four minutes now. It's crazy. What Come on. <laughs> Come on, Vish, you make a move. Make a move. Madness. Come on. Hmm. <laughs> That sounds like what, what I say half the time in sub battles. Like, make a move, make a move, just move, make a move. Incredible, the uncertainty of this strong player. He clearly is a bit off form. He better get back in form or he's going to be out of this competition. He's under four minutes now. It's crazy. What Come on. <laughs> Come on, Vish, you make a move. Make a move. <laughs> Madness. Come on. This is this is unbelievable. This this is shocking. I I'm stunned to see it. He's thinking this long on 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 this the fourth move of the chess game, analyzing what I do not know. But Smearin has successfully thrown him off, and now he's used a minute and thirty seconds to think about four moves. This is completely ridiculous. He's putting himself into a deep deep hole. Yeah, I mean, this this simple recapture of the pawn by white is a little bit unusual. Normally, you attack this knight first. Having said that, the position is fairly simple. What is Vichy doing? He's finally made a... Yeah, so see, this is what it's about. Like I said, he was debating whether D6 or D5, because I think probably at the time, he wasn't 100% sure what the what the theory was, and he, he wasn't sure if D6 was playable or not. Like, I think D6 was the first instinct, but he got worried about, like, knight F7 and all kinds of other tricks. And I think mainly he just panicked and he just wanted to make sure that knight F7 is not a move here. 
I think that's what it was more than anything else. Um, because d6 and d5, I believe, are both moves in this position. The move, I mean, could it could it have been that dramatic? I do not know what he was thinking about, but it's certainly surprising. He spent all that time and finally he's chased the knight. And by the way, the other way you know that the, that this was a little bit unusual, is, or at least at the time was unusual, is because you see here, white has 537, but but the guy who was playing the white piece, Ilya Smirin, does not make his move instantly. So that's that's actually also worth although, noting. Although although he's renowned to be an see, incredible he's speed like player, we've here. seen him uncertain in this match. He he needs to get his form back, and he's lost a lot of time in the clock, and he needs to start whipping out some moves. And finally, mm -hmm. he's pushed his pawn up, and now he's beginning to play a little bit quicker. The bishop attacking, and now his knight has come out into the game, and now he's speeding up. The king is castled. Of course, you guys, th this would go on to become mainline theory later on. Um, Gary Kasparov had a lot of games in this in the early 2000s against players like Michael Adams, Vichy Anand. Um, I think also even Vladimir Kramnik a couple of games as well in the early 2000s. So this this ended up becoming mainline theory, but but at the time it wasn't known. I think Vichy, his D6, D5 think was mainly because he didn't, he wasn't sure what it was. But then once he once he stopped seeing the boogeyman he, and went D6, D5, then you see he was back in his preparations, which is why he could make all these moves very quickly. So this is a fairly well-known position. Um, but Anand has used almost two minutes. By the way, you guys, this is still known. This is still a known variation even today. Uh, there have been many games played in this. So so again, I think Vichy thought forever because he, he, he just wasn't 100% sure. He saw a boogeyman. And he just he he wasn't sure if D6 was playable, and he's like, I think it's this move. And then he started seeing all these all these ghosts, and then he started thinking, then then doubting himself, then going back, and finally he played D6 D5. Is to get that, I just don't, don't know what he was doing. So that he's played this way before. This is a known theoretical position. So and I know it very well, but he's he's moving. He's used a lot of time on his mm -hmm. clock. He's used a lot of time, and and now he's under three minutes. And Smirin has not even used one minute. He's not even used 60 seconds on his clock. Anand already used about two and two minutes, 15 seconds. So the time could be a crucial factor here. Anand's position is fine, very solid, reasonable. He has great experience with this opening, but he's down on time. He's exchanging <laughs> off pieces now. His knight has to drop back, and he's dropped back to the center. The knight kicking at this bishop. So. That's a little bit, I mean, I don't know. Drop back and he's dropped back to the center. The knight kicking at. What is that exactly? What, what is that? What is that? <laughs> I mean, that, what, is, what, what is that? Anyway, okay, let's keep going. This bishop. So let's, let's suppose he wants to save that bishop. Well, then he'll have to drop it back one square. He doesn't want to do that. He's left it alone. Smirin increasing the pressure. Now, this knight is stopping this attack down towards the king. The queen and bishop in a very <laughs> threatening battery down here. So the pawn has come up. He's taken. Oh, this is fantastic. He's taking this pawn. He's sacrificing a piece. And now... Smirin has collected another pawn. It seems as if he thought he was going to win this knight, but Anand has defended it quite simply with this bishop move, and maybe Smirin is going to be down a piece. Okay, but... Smirin has two pawns for this piece. Are we sure this isn't from the 70s? And yeah. He's, he's now got a third. Ew. So he has three pawns for the piece. That's compensation itself. I can't help but think, though, that Anand up a piece is a lot more confident. He's starting to move like his old self. He's gotten the challenge, and he's going to try to meet it, moving much quicker, moving his king now. I think Anand does win this game, by the way. Deadly diagonal. He's put it in the corner, hiding it, and he has a piece. But as you said, Danny, three pawns for it is what White has. Yeah, but, I mean, I would still prefer, I would prefer White's position here, definitely. And at least Anand has something to go for now. It's Knight fairly four. clear Knight where four. his chances lie. Knight f4. So he's down on time, but he's got something to play for now. He's whipping off moves. There's suddenly a pause in the situation. Look at Smirin's bishop. Despite being a piece down, he has some healthy Knight bishops sitting in the middle of the board. And he's attacking a pawn, okay. and Anand has ignored it. <laughs> <This is laughs> Finally he does it. a shootout. Both sides' guns come out blazing and now making sure that no attack happens and Anand has sacrificed the bishop in the middle but of course he would gain that queen 
and he sacrificed his his rook for the bishop, nice. and now he's attacking. He's attacking a rook and a queen. This is fantastic battle going on so here. The reason he's done that is to trade 92 off pieces. and 94. Yep. There you go. He's just trading more pieces off the board, and it seems he's about to win not just one pawn but two. He's ripping a rook. No, in fact, he's only going to win one pawn, and he's up a piece. And Danny, this is like a quick turnaround, and Anna's just up a piece. Okay. No ice. He, he's tried, he tries to get an, but, he, he tries to get an ice skater on the back here with rook f4, queen e8. But Vichy has his own ice skater with queen takes e5. Uh, he's taking a pawn. Fantastic. If, sacrificed his queen. Wait, what was that? He's up a piece. But uh, he's oh, taking a pawn. Fantastic. He's if, sacrificed his queen. If Unbelievable pawn... sacrifice. Anon oh, taking a pawn. Oh, Turn around. Anon is just up a piece. Okay. He's up a piece. But uh, he's oh, taking a pawn. Oh, Fantastic. He's if, sacrificed his queen. If pawn... Unbelievable sacrifice. Anon showing his form. <laughs> so, at the start of this, Smoon had three pawns for the piece. Now he's only got one. Vish, Vishy has a clearly winning position here. The only problem is time. He has. About a minute and a half to try and win this game. Oh my god. Smoon has over three minutes. And look at Anon display his skill, his accuracy, and his move <laughs> moving quickly, showing just why they consider him so fast and so rich a speed player. He's just moving quickly now. He's at a big disadvantage on the clock, but he's got an extra piece. But this this is not over uh, yet. This game is not over. And Ant has only a it should be, that should be the new sub sound. <laughs> look at that position. The piece is all, and he thumped that rook down with authority, and bam, he's ripped off all the extra points. He's just got a pass point, and look at him make a minute look like a year. He's ripped another point off the board. I, 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 that's really, really funny. <laughs> That's a th yeah, make make that a sub sound. Ooh! <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so good. I was I I had not uh I I'd seen parts of that video, but I'd never seen I'd never seen that specific uh, portion of it. That was really really good.